and welcome back everyone to Xi'an China WCG 2019 Clash Royale 1v1 tournament. Whew. How's it going? That was a mouthful. That I know, yeah, I know. The 1v1 match we had earlier was amazing. Juicy J versus Franco. Yes. It came down to the wire. There were two drawers. There was cannon cards. Seven game best of five. Seven, <laughs> seven game best of five. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you think I, we're going to get a repeat? I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, FMGG up against Tauki next. Definitely, I think, could be a very explosive match. Could also be a very one-sided match because if Tauki has FMGG's number, I think he could roll this very quickly. And vice versa as well because FMGG has had an exceptional tournament so far. We're already into the game. This is a best of five. This is semi-final number two. FMGG going to be on the top side of your screen and Tauki going to be on the bottom side. Tauki coming through the tiebreakers. Your fourth seed and the dark horse in this match of whereas FMGG, the absolute favorite for the whole tournament. Yeah, he dominated the last two days he went six and one in total but don't count out Tauki. Tauki has played on the highest stage he's played at CRL he played for kicks he is a great great player so we're gonna see what he can do here we've already seen the cannon card rascals barbarian barrel I, honestly golem cannon could, card maybe? it really could be that that golem deck and on the other side by the looks of things, you know, you got the Dark Prince, you got the Lumberjack there. Could Possibly have, Balloon? Yeah, it could be a Balloon. Yeah, There's even a potential of like a Royal Giant in there along these kind of cards. We'll have to wait and see what else is going to be in these decks. Baby Dragon going to be taken down as Mega Minions come out on both sides. And the Rascals are going to be dropped in the back for Tauki. Yeah, he just splits them up just to make sure that if anything is coming down that left-hand side, he's going to be ready for it. But the boy tanks for the Mega Minion, and then the Rascal Girl in the back, and a Goblin Cage from Tauki. Interesting deck here. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Alongside that Cannon Car, certainly uh, a creative deck. And this is why I love these kind of tournaments, where you've got players like Tauki who has another chance of proving himself as a player. Obviously, as you said, he's played in place. Graveyard! What is this what deck, Tauki? But he's going getting on. Look at the damage he's getting from the skeletons at the back of the tower. 2065, not the greatest, down to 1931, but still, out of nowhere, that graveyard, that graveyard should not have done any damage at all. Yeah, and just about even an elixir as well, the bandits should be able to, or the rascal, sorry, should be able to deal with that relatively easily. The golem finally comes down on this top side from FMGG. Those rascals are just about in Princess Tower range, so they will be finished off. Actually, only one of them, but the Lumberjack's there to finish it off. And now we'll see if this push can be defended. Yeah, so we see the cannon card going to work on the Golem. When that goes, it's going to distract. There we go. Oh, the, the, goblin, the Golem goes down really quickly. Tornado bringing everything into the middle for the Baby Dragon to try and get the splash off. But well defended there by Tauki. Yeah, excellent play coming out from Tauki and the poison doing a ton of work just to clear through all of those units. Everything was already relatively low, so the poison actually getting a lot of value there. And now as we head into overtime, FMGG with this double elixir is gonna drop Gollum in the back, but immediately it's gonna be answered in the left lane. Oh, the cannon cart wasn't quite in range of the tower to distract for the graveyard. That's the issue when you try and play it that quickly. The cannon card, if it was a little bit more forward, would have tanked all of that. The graveyard would have done a lot more damage with the Barbarian, yeah. taking it down to 60-55. Does Tauki have any defense, though, against this Golem push? Still good amount of damage on that left side from the Barbarian, but look at this Tornado. is going to mean that the Baby Dragon can do a lot of work here. The Golem finishing off the cage, and now the Brawler comes out and starts beating the living daylights out of these Golemites. It's going to be a little bit of damage onto the tower, but not as much as FGG wants. And now the Barbarian Barrel in the left lane alongside this graveyard. How much is there to defend it? Dark Prince comes out, but it's another good little chunk of damage. Look at the Brawler on the right-hand side as well. Getting a couple of hits in there. one 4 3 Tauki has come out and made a statement here. He is not to be mis... Like, you know, misunderstood. He is playing so well right now. And the cannon card gets through. It's going to get one hit. Oh, that tower go. is in trouble. It's going to be doing a lot of damage here. The Mega Minion trying to protect his cannon cart. 400 HP remaining. The Mega Minion will go down cage here to try and defend against this Golem. All he needs is a single graveyard alongside something else to tank, and he will be able to win this game. One poison, one graveyard will probably win this here for Tauki. FMGG throws out the good game. It looks like he knows yeah. he is in trouble at this point. 
He knows that his number is up. One minute 30 to do it as well, but basically in spell cycle range at this stage. The poison comes down, Dark Prince is there, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Then again, I think he'll survive for now. Another couple of hits from the Skeletons. 73, one poison away from winning. Just out of range there. He need just one or two more Skeleton hits to finish it up. So this is FM's biggest push. He needs to win the game on this before the poison yeah. comes back in cycle. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. It's, it's just, just not happening. All right, so Tauki, what a way to start off this series. When you're the underdog, you've come in through tiebreakers. You're the fourth seed in the semifinal going into game one. Not only playing a relatively unconventional deck here with the cannon cart alongside the graveyard, but also doing it in style and winning convincingly. Yeah, the cannon cart makes so much sense thinking about it in that deck because you want something to tank yeah. for the graveyard, right? The cannon cart has so much HP right now. It's such a smart play. And then you can swap in the Barbarian Barrel. Yeah, and, and not only that, the cannon cart does an excellent job of DPSing down the things that you would play to try and counteract a graveyard. Things like the Dark Knight yeah. will be... will actually take a huge amount of damage from that cannon cart. Yeah, and I mean, FM tried his hardest there. He had the Lumberjack. The Dark Prince, I mean, he had the tools. The only thing I think would have saved him is a poison. If he had his own poison, he yeah. would have been able to do it. But that deck doesn't run poison very well. It's really hard to fit into a Golem deck. Yeah. So, I mean, Tauki making a statement here. Yeah, fantastic. Game number one from him. And FM suddenly uh, losing a game here, which is uncharacteristic for him in this tournament. He has been... Not only winning his series, but he's been winning them convincingly as well. So now I'm curious to see how FM is going to react to game one going to his opponent. We saw before losing game one isn't necessarily a death sentence. No. But Not for, in a best of five. But for FM, I mean, he's got a mountain to climb. I think Tauki may have just done a lot of research overnight about FM, making sure that he can get into the finals. Yeah, bear in mind, all of the qualifiers are up. The VODs are available. Yeah. All of the day one, all of the day two VODs are available as well. So a lot of research was doable last night, if you could get a VPN working. <laughs> um, so, you know, th there's been plenty of opportunity for Tauki to actually get this knowledge and make sure that he knows how to go up against FM. And we were watching them this morning. Tauki practicing hard, getting ready for the games today. And so far in game number one, proving that the hard work's paying off. Yeah, Tauki is here with a uh, couple of the other Kicks guys. He's here with Maluntin, who plays in CRL. Yeah. And they've just been chilling out together. I think Maluntin is there just, like, calming him down, just giving him, like, one or two ideas. But I was talking to them yesterday, and he was like, why do I keep giving you the worst deck suggestions? Like, Maluntin is just telling him ideas for decks, and Tauki loses with them. He lets Tauki do his own thing. Tauki starts winning. Yeah. That's and a sign of a good manager. But everything is going off here. Flying machine from Tauki, minor from FMG, shut down very quickly. Yeah, I don't think either of them gonna be too impactful. Minions come down just to stop the flying machine getting any shots in, but realistically, not too much to talk about right here at the start of the game. But yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and one of the things about Clash Royale is, when, especially when we're talking about players that are looking to kind of build a name for themselves in the scene and become a more impactful player in the scene overall. Making creative decks, bringing out your own style is absolutely a way to make an impact on the scene. 120%, but we see three flying cards here. Baby Dragon, Mega Minion, and the Flying Machine we don't see very often, but the Flying Machine is actually a super good card in the meta right now. Yeah, really good, and just great damage as well. Able to shoot. Any unit that's going to be coming the way. The Prince, though, is going to get a huge Ooh. connection there. That is massive damage. Two hits out of the Prince. Mega Minion goes down. The Flying Machine just not able to DPS quick enough. Tauki there, run out of Elixir, couldn't throw anything to try and stop that Prince and takes a lot of damage because of it. The Miner comes down oh from FM and look, look at, at the damage getting done here. And Tauki's defense is kind of capitulated here. I think it's really often easy to underestimate the damage a single minion can do, but when the miner comes on through, there's a minion just one hit away, you've zapped it, but it hasn't quite died. They can do unbelievable amounts of damage. Yeah, the small flyers, man, the small flyers do so much damage, minions and bats, but here's the Dark Prince, charges in, nothing oh, to stop it. Goodness. Tauki saving that elixir, he is gonna build this large Lava Hound push on the right-hand side. And it has to work, but look, FM has so much elixir to play with right now. 
And a fireball as well, so he's going to be able to do a lot. Look at the brawler, by the way. The brawler just connects on the left. Nothing, neither player really interested in the brawler, but just did a ton of damage. The Prince coming on through. Goblin Cage will be there to block that major hit. We'll see what can happen here. Poison to uh, go alongside this Lava Hound. Dragon going to be there dealing damage as well. It's going to be a, connects. It's gonna be a gonna decent be hit here. Lumberjack now flying machine as well as the brawler. Dark Prince is going to go down in a heartbeat right now. This is going to be huge damage. Good fireball, but look at the Goblin Brawler. Rage stop taking <laughs> out that tower. My goodness, Tauki brings it back, and now he has the advantage. He has 2,112 on his tower against 1478. And again, like. These decks coming on out, the, the raged up brawler just dishing out so much damage and it's the kind of thing that it's really not been out long enough to, to be able to know every single situation that the brawler's going to be in. Babe Dragon comes on in, there's a Mino as well as the giant here, Prince. Might just be able to connect to tower, but he is being targeted by the King Tower himself. Lava Hound in the meantime on the top left tower. The Mino will go down eventually. It's going to be a relatively even trade, all things considered. Yeah, FM dealt very well with that push that was coming from Tauki. Tauki took a lot of damage, though. Down to 975. His advantage has been completely wiped out by the push. There is the mine. Oh, the Lumberjack didn't catch it. So it's going to take even more damage. There's the Fireball. Will the Giant be able to connect here? No, it doesn't. But the Mega Minion is going to take out that Brawler. Yeah, the Mega Minion actually following up towards the top side of the map. That actually could be huge for FM if something else can get in front of him, but it's not going to happen here. And I think he will just go down in the end. Minions coming on out as well. Baby Dragon will go down. Mega Minion there trying to dish out the damage that he can. The Brawler arrives and starts DPSing down this Giant. The Giant is going to drop in seconds. Won't get a sick. Oh, oh no, he in. does get a hit, and I think and that's, that's it. I think that's it. The Mega Minion's going to connect. That is it, FM. Woo. Two crown in Tauki there. What a way to end the game. I thought Tauki maybe could come back in that one. When the Brawler took down with the Rage, the top right tower, I thought maybe that was going to be things swinging in his favor. I mean, he had the advantage at that point. Yeah. He, he was 700 HP up on his Princess Towers. It looked as though he may have been able to just turn it around, but FM just pulls it and, out of nowhere. And that's such an important moment in this series as well. Yeah. When FM falls behind to Tauki after getting an early lead, it's so important for FM in this whole best of five to win that specific situation. Because if he loses one elixir trade there, if he starts to fall behind in value, suddenly this entire best of five is falling apart. If he goes 2-0 down off the back of that, everything is pretty much over. But he manages to pull it out. He manages to take this victory against all odds, honestly, in that situation. And FM showing he's a player worth his salt and now evening up the series. Just... Unbelievable play there from both players. Tauki didn't have the strongest showing. Has come back and shown that he is capable of rolling with these guys. FM though, is anyone going to be able to stop in this tournament? Honestly, it's going to be tough. And uh, well, we've got GCJ in the final. We'll see if FM is going to be the one to match him because this series is by no means over with the way no. that Tauki is playing as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Anyone can take this. Anyone can get to the final. We're going to have to find out when Game 3 eventually does start. Yeah, and, and honestly, while this series is not over, with a game like that going the way of FM, you have to assume that FM is a heavy favorite now. When he was so far behind in that game and does manage to flip things around and come back, does manage to find himself the win anyway, change up his playstyle mid-game to find an advantage in that kind of series, it definitely says great things about him as a player. I mean, Tauki was one tower down, right? FM took the first tower. Yeah. Tauki then got the Goblin Brawler onto the tower. And I think most of his tower damage was actually done by the Brawler under Rage. Yeah. I don't think he had that much oomph to his pushes for Tauki. Tauki was always kind of on the back foot. That's he true. took the tower out of nowhere. Like, both of us weren't expecting actually, that tower to go actually down. Actually, the left tower as well. He got half of its HP, but it was off a brawler that was kind exactly. of just ignored in the left lane. So we're going to get back into the game here. Once again, we see a Mega Minion from Tauki and a Miner once again for FMGG. <laughs> Dark Prince is going to start coming down that left-hand lane and a Flying Machine again here for Tauki. Does that mean he's going to go for the same deck? Thinking maybe he can make it work this time, but he needs to stop that Dark Prince. And he does. Last time he wasn't able to stop the Prince's Charge. This time, just about in the nick of time, manages to just do it. Yeah, so it looks like it is going to be that same deck, the Giant coming down as well. And let's bear in mind that 
early on in the game last time, there was a Prince that managed to get his Lance straight onto the tower and just a full charge onto a tower, even if there's no follow-up hits, just does so much damage. That can single-handedly be one of the deciding factors in a game. Yeah, well, he's got to be feeling confident to bring the same deck again, even though at loss. But look at the damage being done by the Miner. 1674 remain, but this this push for Tauki is kind of dangerous here. The Lumberjack is going to go down, but the Baby Dragon's going to get a couple of hits in the Flying Machine There's very little well. Elixir here for FMGG. This That's push is going to be absolutely massive. Fireball comes in, but the Rage Stop Barbarian is just going to start chipping away at that tower. It's going to go down to just around Ooh. 600. Wow, that was that was a turnaround for Tauki. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was a super high value Fireball. That Fireball keeps FM in the game here, but that was a massive push for Tauki. And the kind of classic Rage Shop Barbarian. It, it's an old school one. It's off the original trailers, but he does manage to do a huge amount of damage to that tower. I mean, any other player would have tried to put a card down, like would have tried to put something down to stop the damage coming in. FM waits his time, waits his time, and then just throws out that fireball, knowing he won't have any other elixir available to him. Here we go, Lava Hound dropped in the bridge here. Mega Minions are going to be traded off, and it looks like FM's Mega Minion will be able to get onto, onto the Lava Hound. But look at this, the Princes connect now. 1,000 on the left lane. The Miner is going to go down. Mega Minion trying to get onto this Dark Prince. Barbarian will block the real Prince as well. In the meantime, the Lava Hound has been dealt with, but now the left lane, the Lumberjack charges down. Yeah, actually nothing doing with that Lava Hound. Very little effectiveness. And the minions on the right hand side are going to come down. But will Taki be able to defend this right hand, this left hand side push? That I don't know. He doesn't have anything. Has to throw out the brawler. Has to throw out the cage, but he's going to lose the tower. 10 seconds remain. That tower is down. Does he have anything Man. to do 613 damage here? No, he, absolutely nothing at this point. Three seconds left, and FM is going to take the second game in this series. FM, the value he is getting in these trades. The way he was able to deal with the Lava Hound, basically committing. Basically nothing to dealing yeah. with that push. But in the meantime, setting up such a commanding push in the opposite lane. I feel like the Lava Hound was just a little too greedy. Playing that down that right-hand side, I know that's what his deck's about. I know he has to play the Lava Hound at some point. But at that point, he had an advantage. He tried to push the advantage yeah. onto the opposite side. And it backfired spectacularly there. He got and like a hundred damage on that tower with the Lava Hound push. And the thing is, it's like he commits the Lava Hound. It's so much elixir that he's committing to that right lane. When you're against giant double prince, that is a push that you need elixir to defend against. Yeah. They do so much damage. And then the miner as well to get onto straight onto the back of the tower. You can't deal with all of those threats in all different directions unless you have that elixir available. And because of that Lava Hound, unfortunately, Tauki didn't have it. Now FM getting another win on the board. 2-1 now, and he's feeling incredibly strong moving into game four. Yeah, I don't know what Tauki can do to come back. Like, you know, this is the guy who, FMG has been dominating everyone this tournament. Absolutely everyone. And now being 2-1 down, potentially match point, right? This, is, this could be it for Tauki in the semifinals. Yeah. And in that case, he would go into the third place match against Franco. Franco, exceptional player so far this yeah. tournament. That's going to be a difficult matchup. But also the finals, Juicy J also had a commanding run throughout this tournament. He's guaranteed himself at least $20,000 at this point. Whoever goes into that semi, whoever goes into that final has a massive matchup on their hands. But the third place match as well, that's going to be an intense one. Fighting, oh, fighting for 10000 or nothing. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big drop-off, isn't yeah. it? 10,000 or nothing. Um, but we are soon to get into this game here. Let's find out if Tauki can bring this back or yeah. if FMG can close out the series. All right, well, FM changing things up here, changing his deck. But it is still going to be a Dark Prince on his side. And I love the FMGG two games in a row just running the double prints as well. Basically saying, look, you couldn't beat it in the last game. Why would I change things up moving forwards? But he has changed things a little bit going into game number four here. And we'll see what Tauki is going to have in his pocket to deal with this one. Yeah, so we see the Ice Wizard as well. And Royal oh. Giant, Mega Minion, and Sparky on the right-hand side. Now, does FMGG have 
anything to slow that Sparky down. The Mega Minion is going to take minion. this one out, though. Yeah, well, have maybe to not the see. best answer to the Royal Giant there. He does have the Ice Spirit, which, in the right situation, can do a good amount of work against the Sparky, but certainly not the ideal answer. You're wanting a Zap, you're wanting an E Wiz, even just a Lightning. Anything, anything to reset it because it can get incredibly scary if Tauki can start building this push and he even has the Goblin Cage. Yeah, one thing you can do is use that Barbarian Barrel to kind of spin the Sparky around and distract the shot in the opposite direction. But ideally, you want to be able to stop the shot happening in the first place. Yeah, and it doesn't look like he's going to have any e with no, no Zap even. So we're going to see the Brawler here take that out. The Brawler's going to charge down. I think it might get one hit, and now this is where Tauki is going to start building his Goblin Giant push. But the Royal Giant on the left-hand side is going to do a lot of work. There is the barrel. Mega Minion as well. He does. Tauki no longer has the Elixir to throw down anything in front of the Sparky. So he's going to throw a naked Sparky down that right-hand side. And I don't think it's going to get that much damage in no. at all. A perfect answer. Dark Prince obviously will just tank up that first shot comfortably with his armor. Allows the turret to finish that one off. The Princess Tower will be able to do the damage. Another Goblin Cage comes down here towards the right lane for Tauki. And maybe with a Goblin Brawler in front of it, a Sparky can do a lot here. But in that situation, it's not going to be enough. Yeah, place the Royal Giant on the right-hand side. This may just play to Tauki's favor because right Ooh. now, that is where he wants to build this push. The Royal Giant goes down with one shot. So lightning has been revealed now. It does hit the Sparky for the first one, but the the giant goblin comes on down now as our spark. He's behind it, and the lightning is going to be off rotation right now. The Dark Prince is focusing the wrong target, and lightning comes down on both sides. Sparky is going to be finished off in the end, as will the giant goblin. But still, FM with a health advantage in this one. Yeah, but Tauki may have the opportunity to reboot once again. He lets his Sparky sit go. under the Mega Minion, but the recoil pushes it out of the Mega Minion's range. And now this is a very healthy Sparky that he can build a push with. There's the Goblin Giant. Sparky in the back. Lightning comes down, but Sparky still gets one shot off that Dark Prince. Bear in mind, with Lightning in this deck, he only needs a couple more Royal Giant hits onto the tower, and FM will be looking at a game and series win here. The Royal Giant comes down. Sparky isn't there just yet. The Cage will be able to block a couple of shots here, and I think the Royal Giant might be able to be dealt with. He can take zero damage from this Royal Giant. Ah, Ooh. manages to do it this time. It was close. It was very close, but it's dealt with in the end. Ice Wiz will be able to deal with the Brawler as well. Dark Prince now coming down. Yeah, and this is another scary push. Any damage on that tower. Oh, beautiful tornado. Pulling away the e -wiz there. And now it is all on Tauki to try and defend this. I don't think cage. he's going to have anything. The cage comes down right in front, but he's going to have to slow it down, stops it. Oh, perfect defense here by Tauki. This is such an intense matchup. The Brawler charging forwards will get one hit, two hits in before it goes down. 900 HP on that tower just under. And this is such a close matchup. Lightning comes on through and he's getting into spell cycle range. The Dark Prince charging forward will be dealt with. And the Giant Goblin comes in. One more lightning for FM, and he will finish this game. There is a beautiful tornado. That means lightning is in hand. Puts down the Dark Prince. Okay, can he hold on for three, two more elixir, one more elixir. The lightning surely is going to come down. Sparky down at the bridge, just needs to be distracted here. Mega Minion finishes it off, and that's a Barbarian Barrel just to make sure. It's going to be a clean ending, and FMGG is moving on to the finals with a 3-1 victory. FMGG there. Just manhandle Tauki. Yeah. Manhandle. And also, the, the bravery, the courage to hold on to the Lightning for so long in the game. We always talk about how players hold cards. They don't want to reveal what they have. Yeah. It's not usually a defensive card, though. It's not usually an answer. It's usually their actual win condition but not showing that he has an answer to the Sparky for so long. Finding other ways to deal with the Sparky and then bringing it out when it's going to swing the game. i got to give FMGG huge credit for his patience too. So you, yeah. as you mentioned, he held it for the longest time and there was 500 and something HP on that tower. Yeah. He could have just started throwing the lightning down immediately. But instead, he's like, okay, so I need to get a little bit more damage before I can throw this lightning down. Yeah. So he starts trying to build these Royal Giants. 
He lets one Goblin Brawler through, takes a little bit too much damage. He's like, okay, now it's time. Safety gloves are off. It's time to just start throwing those Lightning down yeah. on the tower. Time to find some value here. Time yeah. to finish this game off. And it was... It was a tight one, honestly, because his, like you say, that Goblin Brawler got through. His tower got down to, what, 800 HP, maybe slightly less than that. That's a dangerous situation to be in because his opponent had Lightning too. Bear in mind, Tauki had Lightning in his deck. So when it starts to rotate on through, he was getting towards spell cycle range. But most importantly, Sparky never got to the tower. Sparky was always incredibly well defended by Ethan. Yeah, and there were too many times where Tauki just let that Sparky sit out in the middle of nowhere under a Mega Minion. Like, Mega Minion destroys a Sparky. Yeah. And Mega Minion destroys a lot of you. It destroys nearly <laughs> everything in the game. But there was one point where the Sparky's recall actually pushed it out of range of the Mega Minion, which I think saved Tauki for an extra minute, I would say. All right, well, that is going to be our second semi final done and dusted. FM going to be going on into the final against the Juicy J. That is the matchup we've all been looking towards. We'll see that later on next. We've got our third place match coming up. So do not touch that browser. We'll be back in a few minutes' time.